Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Spyderco Dragonfly 2. This is an FRN model with VG10 steel. You can get upgraded models, but this is the one I'll be taking a look at today. So let's go ahead and jump into it. We'll go over some size comparisons, like, neutral, dislike, and then I'll give you a conclusion on this thing. Alright, on to the size comparisons first. So I'm going to go um, in kind of a small to large order. So here's the Victorinox Classic which is a very, very small knife. So you can see it is smaller than the Dragonfly, of course. Um, the Dragonfly is a small knife, but it is not that small. Here it is next to the Kershaw Launch 4. I compare the Dragonfly to the Launch 4 a lot in my review of that knife, and I prefer this one quite a bit, as you'll see in the review. Much, much more favorable. Very popular small knife here. The CRKT Pilar, or Pilar, I'm not sure it's uh, Spanish, I believe. So very, very similar size here. Extremely close. The biggest difference that you'll notice between these two is going to be the weight, the materials, and the cost. Most of which favor the uh, the Dragonfly there. Um, on to uh, two slightly different size comparisons. This is another smaller knife that I picked up recently, the Kaiser Feist. Pretty similar size overall. I don't see this mentioned a lot when these small knives come into play, but um, very, very similar size on that. And uh, a knife in a somewhat similar-ish price range. This is the Tangram Vector. It's a little bit larger. Not a whole lot, though. Different materials. And, you know, maybe about $15 cheaper. Not a huge price difference between those two. All right, let's go ahead and get into what we like about it. All right. First thing up is the blade shape. I love Spyderco's like leaf shaped blades. These are awesome, 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 awesome. Um, they cut very, very well. This is a flat grind, very, very thin blade stock. It's like um, 0.1, you know, inches. So very, very thin, very good at slicing, very um, high flat grind with a really, really nice point for uh, piercing. It isn't ridiculously pokey, but it, it's pretty good. And the, the blade shape's just great. The ergos on this thing are fantastic as well. You can see the blade and the handle um, go to form a uh, finger choil. Cutouts in the handle. I wish these protruded a little bit more. Um, but it's not a huge deal in a little bit here. So basically when you, when you grip it, you get a grip here, you can grip here, and a little bit on the tail there. And your thumb locks right in here on this jumping, and it is great. The only complaint I have with the ergos at all is it feels a little hollow here. I wish they had brought it out um, maybe a tenth of an inch or something like that just to kind of fill those two fingers a little bit better. But it locks in very, very well. And there aren't really any uh, you know super bad hot spots or anything if you're bearing down. Maybe the thumb jimping is a little sharp, but it's, it's kind of meant to be, you know, so you can get a grip on it. The jimping on this knife is great. There's um, jimping on the back of the blade here on the scales here, but it is smooth on the liner. There's a little bit here as well, and then the texturing on the handles is, is wonderful. You can see it's kind of a, um, a shingle-looking pattern, and they're all kind of pointing towards the Spyderco logo, which the clip actually rests on on this side, or this side. The clip is reversible, and it's deep carry. Um, there's a little bit of the knife that's going to be sticking out of your pocket, but you probably kind of want that with a knife this small. These Spyderco wire clips are fantastic, and this one's super, super unobtrusive, very minimal. I like it a lot clip on this is really really nice and that little um, finger ramp there makes it very easy to grab that and pull it out of your pocket love that to death the size and weight on this thing are the last thing on the like list so the size is very very small and the weight is very very light this is 1.3 ounces this is next to nothing you barely feel it and that's mainly because it the only you know metal parts on it are the hardware so the screws and clip the blade and then that back lock, which you can see in there and right there. There are no liners. There are no washers. Nothing like that to add any weight to the blade, which means that it's, you know, you can you can get some flex if you really, really try. You can, you know, flex it a little bit. But it's, it's very, very sturdy, honestly. The weight and the size are just about perfect for what I would consider as like a small EDC knife. Onto the neutral. So first thing up, fit and finish. It's not bad. It's it's not. Um, 
but it's not that great either. It's not really blowing me away. There are a few little gaps and things like that, but it's it's not bad. The knife does not feel cheap, despite the cheap material, as far as like the handle's concerned. Knife feels, you know, fairly well made. Um, no blade play or anything like that. It's consistent. It's it's reliable. It's just not blowing me away, which at this price, you know, a few years ago, I would have expected that. But recently, a lot of companies have stepped up their game, and we'll get to that. Speaking of price, the price on this is $60.42 on Blade HQ right now. I did pick this up used for like 35 I think, which is a much more compelling price to me. But that $60 isn't completely unreasonable if you're looking for something like this. I will say, um, I don't. I prefer this over the CRKT Pilar, but at the moment on Blade HQ, you can get a CRKT Pilar with carbon fiber uh, show side scale and S35 VN steel for, um, I believe, 60 or $70. Between those two, it's probably going to be the Pilar for me. Um, that steel is just much, much better, especially at that price carbon fiber is nice it's going to weigh a little bit more it's going to be a bit more beefy especially when it comes to like the blade stock the pilar is much 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 thicker so it really depends on what you're wanting but if it were down to those two and i could only pick one to edc for the rest of my life probably be the pilar but this is this is not a bad knife it's 60 dollars. but i think if they brought this down to about 40 it would be 10 times better but of course spider co is certainly not going to be dropping any uh prices anytime soon so you can open and close this knife with one hand. Um, the action is okay. Um, you can open it slowly. You can most of the time get it with a thumb flick. Sometimes it, it'll misfire for me. You cannot get it with a middle finger flick as far as I can tell. Um, that's kind of consequence of the back lock. The action on these back lock spider codes is never all that good. Um, I have several of them. This, the best action I've had with a, with a backlock spider goes probably the Cento Fonte 3. It's super reliable. If you can get a good grip on it, you can do a middle finger flick. Kind of hard with that handle, but this one's not fantastic. I'm not a huge fan of backlocks. This one is very, very sturdy, though. It's not going to, you know, close on you or anything like that. Very little. Well, there's no um, lock play or anything like that. And you can, you know, you can open it with one hand, and you can reach down here and press that in, move the blade a little bit, and close it with one hand as well, which is usually what I do. So the action's fine, it's just not anything special. On to the dislike. Really only two things here. So the first one for me is, if you watched my unboxing of this video, I did a disassembly as well. Now, the reason I did a disassembly is because this knife was used, I wanted to clean it. So, you know, I, I took it apart. Um, Backlocks in general, for me, have just been massive pains to disassemble. And this one was no exception. However, you can just pop out the pivot, you know, clean out around the blade and put it back in. You don't necessarily have to disassemble the backlock. But if you're going to do a full disassembly, keep that in mind. Next up is the material. These handles are FRN. And the steel is VG10, as you can see there. So these are not horrible materials, and you can get upgraded versions, but they're going to cost you. You can get the steel in a ZDP189, which is much better steel. Um, it is going to take it up by about $25, though, which is not cheap. That's a lot of money. Or you can get it in the same steel with G10 handles, for 47 more dollars. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. They add a little bit more steel, but I mean, that's ridiculous. It's $107 for a VG10 blade on a G10 Dragonfly. That's ridiculous. If you're going to get one, if if you're a steel snob, go for the, you know, ZDP I really don't care on a small everyday carry knife like this. I would just go with this version. But the materials at that price, they're just not doing it for me. Especially when you have competition coming in and just destroying these. Like the new Civivi knives. For $60, you can get the Aquila or whatever it is in you know G10 and VG10. Much larger knife. But, 
I, I digress. I, I don't want to go on a rant here, but the price for the materials you're getting just is not that great. They really need to step up the material game or cut down the price one. On to the conclusion. Um, in conclusion, I really, really like this knife. If you can pick it up for $40 or less, grab it. For $60, uh, I don't know about that. That's, that's a lot of money, um, especially nowadays when you have Chinese companies coming in and, you know, undercutting these knives. Um, an example is the Tanger Vector. Uh, not as nice steel, but you have aluminum handles. It's a button lock. There's more material here. Warranty's not nearly as good, but it's just getting hard to justify this price. If it were made in America, I understand that adds a little bit of price to these things. If this were made in the Golden Colorado factory, $60 I, I could deal with all day. But this is made in Seki City, Japan, um, which all of my spider codes have actually been from Japan, which is interesting. I didn't think about that. Um, the fit and finish isn't bad, but it's not amazing. The materials aren't amazing, and the price is high, especially for what you're getting. Price is unreasonable, but it is high. If you can pick one of these up for about $20 less than retail, around 40 or less, I'd say go for it. A very interesting, very, very nice small EDC knife. It's it's a fantastic utilitarian blade shape. Really, really ergonomic handle. I really, really like this knife. I just wish it were a lot cheaper. That's it for this one. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to check out my other stuff. Subscribe, all that. Check out my Patreon if you'd like to. And um, keep an eye out for some upcoming videos. There will be a review in the coming weeks, so keep an eye out for that. It is a, of a pen, so if you're interested in that, just watch my channel um check me out on instagram all that random social media stuff and have a nice day thanks guys bye